Hello friends, welcome to Autism Compact, the podcast with Timo Warnholz on the topic of autism spectrum disorder. In this podcast, I would like to explain to you simply and uncomplicated how autism works with all the symptoms and behaviors and what else is included. Um, in each episode, we will deal with a special question and explain it using technical backgrounds, but also many examples from practice. Um, I'm happy. I'm definitely very happy that you're here. And uh, that's why we're just getting started. Yes. And of course, that should be the case. And today we are dealing with a question. Yes, I would say that there is a bit of fire in it. And I have been dealing with it for quite a long time. Or it is also a question that uh, is simply brought up again and again. Yes, and it says that autism is a disease and uh, there are very different opinions about it and that's why it's urgently not necessary for us to look at it today from the following points of view. First of all, of course, there is a page that says, yes, of course, autism is a disease or now autism spectrum disorder because it is defined as such in ICD-11, which means in the International Classification of Diseases and Functional Disorders, and here under 6A02 for those who haven't heard of it yet. Uh, we are now out of ICD-10, if anyone knows about it, and since January 1st, uh, January 22, we are working with ICD-11, and this means on the one hand that all the usual boundaries between the different autism diagnoses no longer hold. That means there is no Asperger's syndrome anymore and there is no early childhood autism, so no Kana syndrome anymore and no atypical autism instead. Does all this formulation autism spectrum disorder now prevail? So, and yes, according to this one, you have to say very clearly, yes, autism is a disease because that's what it officially says here in ICD-11. So that can't be completely wrong. Yes, but of course, there is another side here too. And that is the people who say that can't be somehow and autism is not really a disease now or it doesn't even know the characteristics in the sense of deficits and they are not so easily distinguishable from neurotypical behaviors and yes you actually have to look at what is meant by this and in the end it's what a lot of people would say you could also say that autistic behavior is simply part of human diversity and is therefore not a disease because you don't have to cure or correct autism at all. Rather, we know that autism is present from birth and autism is still there. Or let's talk about autism spectrum disorder a little more officially when you die. Yes, that is. Bottom line, one could also argue that autism is one of many human ways to behave and many great people have already formulated it that way. Um, among other things, um, I heard this sentence from Temple Grandon who said it in the EU, I think in the New York Times and originally I think this statement from Hans Asperger, but there are different ones. Guess who said that first? But of course, you can also see it that way. And I'll give you a very small hint because I see it the same way. So my personal opinion on the topic is that autism is not a disease, but an alternative form of perception, uh, perhaps you could say, or perhaps also an alternative prioritization um, with regard to social interaction, for example. And this is simply explained for me by the fact that autism has no really isolated deficits, but only in its orientation to the average value. This means that autistic people first have the big problem that they are less, and that's why they always have to stick to the standard values, i.e. the neurotypical ones, the neurotypical ones in the quotation. 
strokes orient normality yes that means now it was that's a good question uh, is it now bad to push people with uh, autism spectrum disorders into this categorization or should you rather say no we don't have to do anything with disease values here so we don't have to go into the argument here and Yes, there are advantages and disadvantages, actually. Um, and yes, my idea is let's look at them like this. And here you actually find for both sides. So once for the statement that autism should be defined as a disease, because that or it should also be um, considered a disease in society uh, and in society's perception because it has certain advantages. And we also look closely at what disadvantages this has. So both sides will look at us objectively like this and we'll start with the advantages. And now many autistic people will somehow say, hmm, yes, great. What advantages does it have that this is now defined as a disease? Yes, we live in a system, um, especially here in Germany. Yes, where we are, where they are. According to listener statistics, most of us find ourselves living in a health system that assumes that we first have to get sick in order to receive certain subsidies and support measures. So in the end, we are waited until we get sick in order to then get well again, which is quite an interesting concept. And that's how it is here, too, uh, which means that autistic people um, are precisely because they are fewer and often do not fit well into these standard behaviors of um, average society. They are sometimes dependent on certain support and support measures, as well as, of course, on compensating measures when it comes to perceptual processing, i.e., i.e., these stimulus filter situations that are often very difficult for uh, autistic people, especially in group contexts or in public places places, school, um, with work, uh, which is not all there is. And here so-called uh, compensation for um, disadvantages are negotiated, uh, for example, at school, um, but also used elsewhere out of one's own strength or out of structural possibilities. And that means that there are already many possibilities to make social life easier for autistic people and social life too. And that means the following Germany. Then you only get therapy, help measures, uh, support offers when you have a diagnosis or even more in detail, not when you have a diagnosis, but when you are sick. That's how we can simply call it. That is, uh, if we clearly move the bar here and say, no, autism is not a disease, then uh, affected people have, uh, we are already affected by the word. So then autistic people have, I'll put this a little more in my hand here attitude from fewer possibilities to access such helper systems to support measures uh, and that's pretty shit and it must be said very clearly that a change in attitude would of course be very very important here and there would have to be the possibility that um, autistic people even without now being classified as an illness have the opportunity to access something like this uh, at a low threshold but this is, again, a personal opinion of mine. So accurate. And then there is, of course, also financial support through diagnoses, for example, from personal budgets that are not uh, measures to aid unification, i.e. things that you could perhaps still get along the way. Uh, and then there are these small tendencies that people say, well, well, you also have to make sure that research and development is, of course, taking place and that meaningful support systems might emerge from it um, if autism really does. Wedding illness is defined like that yes you can um, you can hold it as you want and you have to see uh, what is more important to you now for your personal perception so uh, that's so nice about these well advantages whatever you want to call them whether you want that is another matter and now of course we'll look again at the disadvantages which of course also play a role here um, so here for example of course we clearly have the point of stigma and prejudice which means that autistic people have to use these help systems if they are in if you want to claim it then you must disclose it and yes of course that also means that the danger of stigmatization and too strong an orientation towards diagnosis is definitely a danger here. 
And that in turn can, of course, lead to discrimination. And that is, of course, a pretty negative impact that arises from this. And then there is also a question of how it is related to acceptance and inclusion exactly when autistic people, for example. If people with autism are viewed exclusively as sick, there is a risk that these unique abilities and potentials will not be sufficiently recognized by autistic people. This means that their potential may be automatically restricted from the outside, perhaps even structurally, and that in turn would have a fairly negative impact on participation and also on one's own ability to lead an independent, mm. controlled life. Yes, exactly. And then it can also be natural that perhaps simply through diagnoses that always insist on certain, uh, yes, on the consideration of certain symptom constellations, autistic people may no longer be seen as independent as individualists. Because we know, you know, you know, it's such a driven saying exactly. And this, of course, also results in the danger that autistic people might simply be perceived as over signatures. Mm -hmm. And that would also be, uh, again, a pretty unpleasant reaction to the whole thing. So let's summarize. Um, when we need help in Germany, and it doesn't just apply to people with autism spectrum disorder, but also to all other people who have any illness or problem uh, where I would like to say again, of course, autistic people, um, the word problem is not used correctly, but then we depend on getting a diagnosis. Otherwise, we have no access to help and support. And of course, these diagnoses make sense. If I broke my foot here in relation to autistic people, we have to see whether there may be smarter ways to analyze such situations well in the future as and how the current situation is on the topic. So autism is a disease or not. That's, of course, up to you. I can also say for myself, as I said, I'll repeat, I'm happy to say again that autism Autism is anything but a disease. So, and with that thought, I'll leave you alone now, and then we'll hear from each other again next week. Until then, ciao. So, that's it for today, and I want to thank you very much for listening. Um, this made me very happy, and also like to visit me on social networks, for example, on Facebook or Instagram, or simply subscribe to my YouTube channel where I also present you once a week a video on the subject of autism spectrum disorder and leave a subscription there, just like here, of course. I look forward to the next time. See you then, ciao.